in your crusade to try to bring some ethics oversight uh, to the Supreme Court, uh, what did you learn today in the hearing about what has been happening with Clarence Thomas and possibly others in financial disclosure forms? Well, the most important thing to understand is that these allegations about yacht and jet travel from the same right-wing billionaire were actually raised first back in 2011. And that was sent for its disposition to the Judicial Conference and within the Judicial Conference to its Financial Disclosure Committee, which is the exact same thing that has been done with the current allegations regarding Justice Thomas. So what they did then is very important to understand regarding what they're likely to do now. And what they did then, a judge who was on the Judicial Conference at the time explained, was to basically ask and answer the wrong question and to use a procedure that prevented any of this from becoming public. So uh, as we look forward to the Judicial Conference considering this latest set of allegations, which are now repeat offender allegations, uh, one can hope that they will do a different job than was done a decade ago. Was there any uh, indication of any disagreement within the conference when they examined this issue in the past? Yeah. Uh, in fact, our witness raised questions about why it wasn't being brought up to the judicial conference when he knew that it was being assigned to this financial disclosure committee of the judicial conference. They're supposed to report back up to the judicial conference so that you then get the chance for the whole judicial conference to understand what took place and make its own determination. So when that didn't happen, he expressed concern and um, did not have any luck getting results at the time. So, you know, life goes on. He went on back to being a senior important uh, judge. And then um, when he saw this, he realized, wait a minute, this rings a bell. And uh, we had him in as a witness to testify about what took place before. So what would you have to do on your disclosure form as a Supreme Court justice to trigger any kind of investigative interest at all uh, through this kind of process? If, for example, you're going to completely leave out your wife's income, which is yeah. much greater than yours, much greater than yours, you're just going to leave that out, violate the rule on the form and leave it out. That leads to nothing. Can anything that you do or don't do on those forms lead to anything? What the law requires of these judges is that they determine whether or not there's reasonable cause to believe that the failure to file was willful. And if there's reasonable cause, then they don't make a decision about willfulness. It's like a probable cause hearing for a search warrant. At that point, you then refer it to the attorney general, and the attorney general makes the willfulness determination. What they did a decade ago appears to have been to actually make the willfulness determination, take that responsibility away from the attorney general, set a much higher bar than reasonable cause, and the result was there was no action taken and there was no public record even emerging from the regular public records of the Judicial Conference. So uh, if they do send it to the Attorney General, then what happens? Then the Attorney General makes a determination whether to pursue civil or criminal fines based on an independent evaluation of what uh, took place. And one of the important things about this judge's testimony was that he made very clear that there's a very important role to have the attorney general come in and make this determination, because when it's all judges and they all have to deal with each other and there's a lot of collegiality, it's important from a checks and balances point of view to actually get to another branch of government, which is why the proper question is, was there reasonable cause, not was there willfulness? And when the uh, system failed to do that, that was a, a breakdown that we hope won't be repeated. Plus now, this is the second time. So the case for willfulness 
is much stronger because of the previous 2011 experience. And I just want to take this one more step for the audience, because I, I know they're wondering, uh, since they're, they don't expect to see any uh, discipline of a, of a Supreme Court justice, I just want to go through the theory of it. If the attorney general determined that this is a willful violation of the disclosure forms, willful decision to never disclose the spouse's income, and the attorney general believes that this is worthy of criminal sanction, what kind of criminal sanction could the attorney general pursue? Well, there are civil fines if he chooses to proceed civilly. There are criminal fines if he chooses to proceed criminally. And if he took this really seriously, there is a federal statute, uh, USC Section 1001, which is a very well-known uh, statute called the False Statements Law. And if you make a false statement uh, in a uh, federal matter, like, for instance, disclosing federally required uh, material, then that's a flat-out criminal offense, standard DOJ prosecutive fare.